Saint Juliana of Norwich, England. She wrote a book, Revelations of Divine Love, and the book is the first written in the English language by a woman. She lived around the 15, middle 15th century. She died after 1416. Let's remember that at that time, it was a clash between the Catholic Church and Protestants. And uh, one of the reasons that the pilgrims left England to come to the new land of North America was because they wanted to follow their own freedom of religion. The Catholic Church did not want anyone having texts in other than Latin. And she, of course, wrote this in the English language. So, as we can understand, that was not making the Catholic Church happy. But uh, the reason I'm going into this saint, an English saint, there were hundreds of saints of England, the British Isles, is because I read something today in my Christian Orthodox book, as I was uh, waiting to receive Holy Communion at our church. It was written by a uh, Christian Orthodox Bishop of London, England, and he referred to her. So I want to uh, present this to you and read it together and learn what her life was like. Let's remember that every one of us in every age could become a saint. We are angels of God prophets of God, apostles of God, and uh, let's uh, not be afraid of that. Everyone is born into this world with a specific apostleship, and God will help us in that if we leave everything up to him. Give him all our problems, he'll take care of them, and ask him to lead us into his kingdom of heaven and do what he would want us to do if he were living in us. So I will read this from the Wikipedia details and uh, hopefully we can have her prayers and blessings for our lives. God bless you. Please support my Patreon channel since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. My Patreon channel will have five different videos from my YouTube channel every day. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. And this is the Wikipedia page of Giuliani of Norwich, Julian or Giuliani, and uh, from 1343 to 1416, known as Dame Julian or Mother Julian, an English anchorite of the Middle Ages. Uh, what is an anchorite? Someone who, for religious reasons, withdraws from secular society, living a monastic life, withdraws from secular society to be able to lead an intensely prayer-oriented, ascetic, or Eucharist-focused life, while anchorites are frequently considered to be a type of religious hermit or monastics. Now, in the Middle Ages, she wrote the best-known surviving book in the English language written by a mystic called Revelations of Divine Love. And it, uh, it's supposedly what Jesus Christ dictated to her to write down. Now, the book is the first written in English by a woman. Now, the reason I'm saying that uh, it's what Christ revealed to her and asked her to write down is because this bishop, uh, Bishop Anthony Bloom of the Christian Orthodox Church, uh, the, the, the cathedral is in London around uh, opposite the... Uh, it was around Kensington uh, uh, Gardens. Um, I had one time gone there for Christmas because we were at Christmas uh, with uh, visiting a family. Um, and I went to the church because I said, look, I've got to go to the church on Christmas Day. And of course, I forgot that um, Christmas is uh, 13 days after our uh, regular Christmas, you know, December 25th. Uh, it's basically on um, the 6th or 7th of January. So I went there and there was no Christmas uh, liturgy. It was uh, actually a um, memorial service for a woman. Now, uh, Anthony, Bishop Anthony Bloom, why do I love him so much? It's because he was Russian and when he was 18 years old living in Moscow, in the communist, of course, regime, he 
uh, didn't want to live anymore. And one of his friends brought him a book, uh, uh, you know, the priests couldn't even dress like priests. A priest brought him a book of the New Testament, the, the Gospels of the New Testament, and he opened up the shortest one, Mark, I think. And the minute he started reading, even though he didn't believe in Christ, Christ appeared to him in his room. And from then, uh, he went on to, uh, his family left Moscow, they went to France. He became a doctor and a surgeon. And uh, then he became a, an ascetic. He became a priest, monk, and a bishop. And he wrote many books in English. One of them is How to Pray. And um, anyway, he reveals to us the revelations of Giuliani of Norwich. And he says that uh, Jesus Christ is the one who, uh, who uh, told her to write down this book, Revelations of Divine Love. And obviously he told her to write it in English. And let's remember, one of the reasons that the pilgrims came to the new land was that they were persecuted and uh, because of translating uh, from Latin to English so that people could understand what the Holy Bible was talking about. Anyway, she lived practically her whole life in the English city of Norwich an important center for commerce, religious life. During her lifetime, the city suffered devastating effects from the Black Death, the plague, the Peasants' Revolt, um, which affected large parts of England, and the suppression of the Lollards. And um, age 30, she was so seriously ill, she thought she was on her deathbed. And that's when she was ill, that's when she was getting all her revelations. Julian received a series of visions of the passions of Christ. Let's remember that Maria Vella Torta, when she was sick, had uh, the revelations of the five or six books, beautiful books of the poem of the man, God, Jesus Christ. He was dictating to her from the time of the life of uh, uh, the conception of our Holy Mother. I think the first book is about the Holy Mother. And then the other books are about the life of Jesus Christ. And uh, every day, everyday lives, and just beautiful books. Poem of the man, God. Now, um, and uh, he told Maria Vella, de la, Vella Torta to uh, anyone has the right to take the books and translate them into any, lang any language they want. Uh, because uh, I read them in English, obviously. Now, now uh, concerning here, Julian of Norwich, for much of her life, she lived in permanent seclusion as the anchoress in her cell, which is uh, attached to St. Julian's Church, Norwich. And... Um, this is what Norwich looked like. It was a very small area. Um, look at that. It's basically all priories and everything. From what I saw, it has. Uh, it was a walled city uh, with various gates and uh, towers, towers and gates, doors, gates, and uh, priories, chapel, chapel fields, Newport gates, Western gate, Hell gate. And look at these, it's just around the river, as you can see. It's basically on the river, so they had the, the river running through the city. Not city, town. Look at it, it's very few buildings. The crosses, I guess, meant that they were cells or uh, monastic uh, buildings. Uh, cathedral precincts, uh, priory. There's another priory over here. Uh, okay, well, that's this thing here. That's what it looked like at that time, about 1300 AD. So, background, the, city, the English city of Norwich, where Juliana probably lived all her life, was second in importance to London, even though it was so small. Uh, I guess the X's and everything were the churches. It doesn't mean that uh, this area was not filled with buildings. Um, at the center of the country's primary region for agriculture and trade, during her life, Norwich suffered uh, terribly uh, the Black Death, of course, a plague. Now, subsequent outbreaks, Norwich may have been one of the most religious cities in Europe at the time, with its cathedral, friaries, churches, and reclusive cells dominating both the landscape and lives of its citizens. On the eastern side was the Norman Cathedral, the Benedictine Hospital, Carmelite fri friaries, and all this. Grey Friars Monastery, as we saw on the map, you can see that by yourself. But her life, Juliana's life. Uniquely for the mystics of the Middle Ages, Juliana wrote about her visions. She was an anchoress from at least 1390s, 
and was the greatest English mystic of her age by virtue of the visions she experienced in her literary achievement, but almost nothing about her life is known. What little is known about her comes from a handful of sources, and she provides a few scant comments about circumstances of her revelations, her book, Revelation of Divine Love, of which one 15th century manuscript and a number of longer post-reformation manuscripts survived, the earliest surviving copy of Julian's short text made by a scribe in 1470s. Now, the earliest known reference uh, living in uh, Norwich, the name Julian comes from a will made in 1394. Um, now, Julian was known as a spiritual authority within her community, where she also served as a counselor and advisor. In around 1414, when she was in her 70s, she was visited by the celebrated English mystic Margaret Kemp. Uh, in the book of Margaret, Marjorie Kemp, which has been claimed to be the first ever autobiography to be written in English, she wrote about going to Norwich to obtain spiritual advice from Juliana, saying, she, I, I don't call her Julian, I call her Juliana because I don't want her to sound like a man. You know. Says she was bidden by our Lord to go to Dame Gillian or Julianne, for the anchoress was expert in divine revelations and good counsel could give. Marguerite Kemp never referred to Juliana as an author, although she was familiar with the works of other spiritual writers I mentioned. So Jesus told Marguerite Kemp to go to Juliana for spiritual advice. Now the visions. According to Juliana's book, Revelations of Divine Love, at the age of 30, and when she was perhaps an anchoress already, she fell seriously ill. On May 8, 1373, a curate, person who is invested with the cure of souls of the parish, in this sense curate currently means parish priest, uh, was administering the last rites of the Catholic Church to her in anticipation of her death. As he held a crucifix above the foot of her bed, she began to lose her sight and feel physically numb. But gazing on the crucifix, she saw the figure of Jesus begin to bleed. Over the next several hours, she had a series of 15 visions of Jesus and the 16th the following night. Julian completely recovered from her illness on the 13th of May, so that's about five days later. She wrote about her showings, not her revelations, shortly after she experienced them. Her original manuscript no longer exists, but a copy survived, now referred to as her short text. 20 or 30 years later, perhaps in the early 1390s, she began a theological exploration of the meaning of her visions, now known as the long text, consisting of 86 chapters and about 63,500 words. This second work seems to have gone through many revisions before it was finished, perhaps in the 1410s or 1420s. Julian's revelations, which appear to have been the first of their kind to occur in England for two centuries, mark her as unique amongst medieval mystics. It is possible she was a lay person, even though she lived like a, a, a monastic, lay persons who are not part of a clergy, usually including any non-ordained members of religious orders, such as nuns or brotherhoods. Now, so she was a lay person, you see, anyone like us, we, I mean, even though we live with our families, we love and we offer our, our love and, and help and services to our family members. It doesn't mean that we cannot be close to Christ. In, in loving and offering our, our help to everybody around us, and even our speech, and even the way we act, is a prayer in itself. When we become our prayer, uh, it's being close to Christ. So she was not a monastic. She lived like she was very close to Christ, but she was a lay person. She was living at home when her visions occurred. And she was visited by her mother and other people shortly before her visions, and the rules of enclosure for anchorists would not normally have allowed outsiders such extra access to her. People were coming and going, you know, friends and family. That doesn't happen in a, in a monastic life, obviously. Now, her personal life. A few, even though, even though Christ told um, Marguerite Kemp to go and visit her because she would get good advice from her, you see? And, and this woman, uh, Juliana, was a lay person. Now, 
the few, I'm, I'm sure that monastics would be shocked, shocked at hearing this. They would say, well, you know, we're praying day and night and fasting day and night all our lives, all these years. Why doesn't Christ talk to us and reveal himself to us? Well, Christ knows the heart of each person. And it's him that he decide, God, Christ decides when to uh, approach a person and how to do that. Now, personal life. The few autobiographical details include, uh, including the short text, include the ge her gender, were supposed, suppressed when she wrote her long text later in life. Historians are not even sure of her actual name. It's general though to be taken from St. Julian's Church in Nor Norwich, but it was also used in its own right as a girl's name in the Middle Ages, so it could have been her actual Christian name. Maybe she, she said Julian, so she sounded like a man, you see. Okay. Now, her writings indicate she was born, okay, 1343. She was six when the Black Death arrived in Norwich, who may have killed a third of the city's population. It's been speculated she was educated as a young girl by the Benedictine nuns of Carroll Abbey. And uh, it's known that a school for girls existed there during her childhood. Anchoresses did not usually have to come from religious community, and it's unlikely that Julian ever became a nun. So she was a lay person. There's no written evidence that she was even a nun at Carroll Abbey during her lifetime. And as she referred in her writings to being visited by her mother at her bedside, commentators have suggested that she was living at home when her visions occurred. Okay, so life is an anchoress. And let's go into revelations of divine love. Um, beloved in the 20th century by theologians and poets alike, her writings are unique as no other works in English, anchors have survived, although it's possible that some anonymous works may have been written by women. Now, I'm going to try and get this, and when I find it, whatever I find, I will read it on a playlist for you, because I want to know what Jesus told her. Julian was largely unknown until 1670, when her writings were published under title Revelations of Divine Love, showed to a devout servant of our Lord called Mother Juliana. Okay, here they call her by her named Juliana, an anchorite of Norwich who lived in the days of King Edward III. Um, okay, so modern interest in her book and all that. Okay, so I just wanted you to know that, you know, England, the British Isles had uh, many, many saints. Um, and of course, they were adamant and bold in their faith. They had very strong faith and a lot of them were chastised for translating the Latin uh, text into the English language so that the peasants and everyday people and lay people, even like Juliana, could read the word of God. And obviously this was blessed by Christ's God. Uh, how, can you, how can you come close to God who told his prophets, even from the Old Testament, to write down what he was telling them if you can't understand what's being written down? You know, the hu humans are the only people, that can, the only animals that can speak and write. And from one generation to the other, we can read what our predecessors uh, went through spiritually by reading their prayers, their books, uh, the Holy Bible. And let's hope I can find whatever these revelations of divine God, love and text, short or long form, um, where they are, so we, I can do a beautiful playlist and we can all learn what Christ told her. Uh, see, even though she was sick, she had div uh, the visions of divine, uh, our divine um, beloved bridegroom, Jesus Christ, just like Maria Velatorta with the poem of the man God. So this is from Wikipedia. God bless you and make living saints out of you so that everyone that knows you, sees you, meets you, even your enemies can say, I can believe in God because this person has God living in them. God bless you and thank you for your support.